Welcome back to the DTF Film Sessions. I'm Max Dean. You can find me on Twitter at TheMaxDean. And here with me today, we have Shane Carter at ShaneCarterTX to talk about Bijan Robinson. So this is going to be episode number 21. And we are talking about the top running back in the draft. Yes, spoilers. That's how we feel about him. Um, but Shane is one of our draft writers for DefiantTakesFootball.com. And I'm excited to have him on talk about this complete player man how you doing today i'm no good thanks for having me on my pleasure so look you know Bijan is he's, he's the best back all year you know i don't think anybody really contests that he's kind of checks all the boxes and we're going to look at each thing he does and just and see what it is about them that he does so well but what is your basic breakdown of Bijan? I think to me, when I, when I think of B. John Robinson, I think of I th- – it, it all boils down to one word, and that's vision. He has some of the best field vision I think I've seen from a, from a running back draft prospect in a long time. He sees where the hole is. He sees where the hole is collapsing, and he sees where it's potentially going to open up next. He is just as dangerous as a north and south runner as he is an east and west runner. So even when you think that you have set the edge on him, you need to make sure you have someone behind him Otherwise, he's going to find five yards going the opposite direction. And we'll see that probably in these, uh, these next clips you got. Yeah, for sure. And I think the vision is readily apparent. The ball skills are readily apparent. He's uh, he's a force. You know what I mean? One of my favorites we'll see here in a second is – I don't want to I don't want to spoil it, honestly, because it's just so fun. But the reality is, is his contact balance is very good. He's explosive. Um, and, and he just does everything. He's a refined um, pass blocker as well. So literally anything you need him to do, he can do it well immediately. And then the real conversation is, once we look through all these, is just how high do you draft him, right? Is he – what kind of value does he bring to your team when we have this running back conversation, which we've had extensively on the podcast. But this is the first running back we've really broken down in tape. So it's so kind of be the first – opportunity to put it in practice here but so let's jump into the tape here and and kind of get going so for i'm just gonna let the play run through and then we'll kind of bounce off of it back and forth so we're just pretty basic to start things off. This is just a chip and 99.9% of chips I'm not putting into a cut up to, to show off how good a player is, Mm -hmm. but this is Will Anderson and he just stonewalls him just with a chip. This isn't even like straight up, like squared up pass protection, but he just completely stops him in his tracks. And that's, I just, I love that. That's power. That's like dedication. And that's, very much a willingness to stick your nose in there. You know what I mean? It's it's a commitment to your responsibility. And it's not like Bijan doesn't know who he's going up against. This is what some people think is the best overall prospect in this year's draft. The guy who probably would have gone number one overall last year in Will Anderson. So he's very much aware of who he's going up against. Lucky enough for him, he has help from his, uh, from his backside tackle. But even still, like you said, just the willingness to do that gives his quarterback enough time to get the pass up. Right. I mean, and that's the idea. It's, it's, again, it's, it's a chip. So he's, he's not fully responsible for the pass protection for Will Anderson, but you know, the tackle doesn't even touch him and he's completely stopped, right? They make contact at whatever, a yard or so before he's completely stopped. And then he gets out on his route there, you know, kind of too late to really be a receiving threat, but, but that's, high impact, right? If you can make that kind of impact against an edge rusher, that just makes them have a really long day and you really help out your tackles because that tackle comes all the way across from the other side, I think. Yeah. So, or it's a guard actually, but it's, he comes all the way across and normally he would never have time to get to an athlete like Will Anderson, but because of this play works really well. And I think it ends up being a reception, but so, you know, there's not too much to go into here, but it's just an example of, of how physically um, intimidating and just overall gifted he is as an athlete. 
And he also masked the block really well because at the last second, like you say, he peels off the block at the last second. But the middle linebacker, number 10, he's already uh, so focused in on going after the quarterback that he actually has the room open. So if the quarterback just has to pull it, you know, Bijan's already there. He's See, there's no one in front. The nearest right. defender to him ahead of him is about 15 yards down the field. So that, that's something that we, that we can't take for granted just because he, he's able to hide the fact that it's a peel block mm-hmm. right there. There's like the, the next closest guy is a, is the is the uh, the Sam linebacker standing on the forty five, but he's mm-hmm. not going to get, get anywhere close to him. Right. If that go route's not open, then he is ready to catch that pass and probably do some damage himself. All right. Okay. Next up. All right. This is just contact balance uh, and power. So we can see it a little bit better here. Good vision too, right? Like that looks like a hole for a sec, but he sees, I think that's, yeah, the defensive tackle is ready to shed the block on 78 there. And he says, all right, no thanks, I'm going to bounce it out. And then I'm going to run through this Alabama linebacker. And this isn't even just like falling forward. This is like, I put you on your ass, I'm stepping over you and continuing for yardage. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I really like here is, is how he's, he doesn't really run upright because he under, he's understanding that as the hole is breaking down, he needs to keep himself down in a center of gravity to where if he's upright, he's a, he's a sitting target. If he's down low right there, he, start, mm-hmm. he starts to crash down a little bit. He's able to use that power, like you said. He ain't the most powerful back in this draft, but it's how he uses the power that's uh, that's able to give him those extra yards. Right. It's It's the power combined with the explosiveness combined with everything else. It's, you know, he's – He's not the best at anything, but he's definitely the best at everything by a long shot. Um, You know, I mean, Gibbs is a very gifted pass catcher. There's other guys that are going to, you know, be able to run through guys more consistently. But it's when you combine the balance, the elusiveness, the ability to to just read everything (laughs) that's unfolding in front of him. He can utilize that better than pretty much anybody. Um, not sure what else there really is to take away from this play. Uh, bad blocking by the offensive line, but he'll he'll find better <laughs> he'll, he'll find better blocking at the next level. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's like you know, it's not his. The fact that there's other guys ready to make the tackle after that is kind of irrelevant to the play. It's the fact that he just. I mean, this is a good form tackle too. This is this is. I wouldn't even call this bad tackling. This is just, I'm stronger than you, and I want it more. All right. There's the vision we talked about. He saw both those guys in the backside with, where he was probably supposed to go. Less, he waits there. There's mm-hmm. a tiny little sliver right there, right between 65 and 64. There's there's very few daylight, but he sees it, and he takes it right as soon as it opens up. Right, so you got both of these blockers coming across. So this is probably intended to be the weak side, mm-hmm. like a weak side rush, but he sees that it's not happening. Like He's watching both of those linebackers. All right. And so, but he waits. He's just patient enough because they recognize it's supposed to be a weak side play, too. And then gives him just long enough to step out of the way. And then he's so explosive that he's able to get full change of direction and then through that hole very effectively. So, vision is exactly, I tried to get one clip that represented each of his skills contact balance and power, um, mm-hmm. vision. Um, elusiveness, uh, pass blocking. In that case, it was really a chip, but still. And then ball skills. So that's this is the vision play. It's great vision because not, not only because he saw the linebacker, but also if you look on the back side, that tackle gets his butt whooped uh, almost <laughs> almost immediately. Yeah. So he, he's it, it becomes he's having to decide between like okay, do I take on one linebacker or the other or two? I have to take on a linebacker and an end, or do I take my chances with the mic? Right. And the mic and, over, and the mic moves like a little bit too early, and so it opens the hole mm-hmm. even more for him. Right, but that's also something that you you can see when you're as good of a player as him. Guys will be a little bit over aggressive and give mm-hmm. up their gap 
if they feel like they're going to need to go help out with somebody else's gap. And if you're aware of that then you can use it to your benefit. Yeah. So really this should have been like a tackle at the line of scrimmage or even like a, a, a minus one and say he gets positive yards out of it. So that's, you're right. Like, like you said, it's just like probably is the, like one of the most like purest forms of his vision. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, uh, he's not the best receiver in the class, but he's really, really good, and he's mm-hmm. really fluid and natural. Yeah, that is run. a very hard reception for a running back. Yeah, no, you have to contort your body in a way that most receivers have a hard time doing that. Because that, that ball is thrown towards the towards the sideline. If you're the quarterback, like, I th- he was trying to obviously keep him away from the defenders nearby. But just to be able to contour your body around like that and still manage to k- catch the ball and stay upright is something that receivers have to try and do. As a running back, it's hard enough, like you said. And personally, I'm, personally, I'm, I'm just a fan of receivers run, uh, running goal routes out of the backfield anyway, especially if you can find a, can find an opening. Right. So like, let's go back to the full route. Now, he's not exactly put in a situation where he's got to make any notable moves during the route, but mm-hmm. – he reads the zones effectively, right? So he stems inside, at least compared to the way that this, I guess this is uh, the end that drops into coverage drifts, right? Like no D end is going to be able to cover that. So that's a mismatch right off the bat. And then it's a well-designed play because they've got the receiver taking up that deep area as well. So that defender is in conflict. And then because he's drifting outwards, but he's able to turn in, catch the ball so fluidly, and then turn and continue upfield. This is this is as dangerous as anybody else is ever going to be in that situation. Even even the better receivers aren't going to be able to do a better job than that in this situation. And he's still able to put a move on and try and, and get more. Yeah, and like you said, like he He's not the most refined receiver. He ain't like the he doesn't have the best hands of all the running backs in this class. I have my own opinions on who that is, but he's very much possibly the most dangerous one with open space after the catch. Yeah, and I, I think especially because he's not the most elusive, but when again, it's when you combine the elusiveness with the contact balance with the power, it he is one of the most difficult running backs to tackle. And if you can rely on him to make somewhat challenging catches like this, then he is a threat. I didn't see anything where he's – he's. I've, I've, I've seen before, not in this particular game, where he's put a move-out guy on a route and gotten open. I wouldn't say that's, like, the strength of his game. But, again, it's just, you know, one more little thing he's got in his back pocket here. All right. Yeah, it's a lot to ask of an edge rusher to cut, to cover the line back to cover the running back <laughs> out of the backfield. Yeah, yeah, especially if he's running a go route and can make mm-hmm. a catch like that. Yeah. Now, really, the save. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, you can you can talk about it as we watch was, this clip. Here. I was going to say that in that last play, the safety probably should have taken over for that receiver after they ran the post route, and the cornerback should have like picked up Bijan after they got to the second level. That's all I was going to say. Yeah, I have to go back. It, I'm not sure if it was what exactly what the coverage is because it might have been cover three, it might have been cover four or six. I just I wasn't paying. I was really looking more at what he did versus everybody else in that case. But but if it was, um, yeah, if it was cover four, then there's enough space for the safety to be there or six, and that's the two the the quarter side. Yeah. But if it was cover three, then it's tough to ask the the safety to like pick that up because he's leaving a lot of space vacated. But again, I'd have to go back and watch it. Um, all right. So this is the last place is probably. Yeah. So this is just really elusiveness, basically, again, more vision and ability to, to just make things happen for yourself. Shiftiness. The patience that he shows as soon as like he's stonewalled at that second level. Once he gets past the line of scrimmage and he realizes that where he wants to go, he's stonewalled right there. 
He wants to go left. He's like, nope, I got I got to cut inside right now. That's, that's, that shows good vision. Here he is. The, the elusiveness, is, like you said, he he sees the linebacker coming in. There's his there's his uh, lateral shiftiness, his, like you talked about, and gets some extra yards of field. Mm-hmm. Yep. So seventy six. You look at fifty four. He's he's supposed to pick up uh, the linebacker right here, and and really also in in, in that block will also slow down ten because ten's going to read this play wrong again. We've seen ten kind of all over the place tonight. <laughs> so far, it looks like yeah. And yep. the holes and the holes going to open up just barely, and and. And it's going to be just enough. Like you said, the safety, right? it's either a safety or a cornerback. The defensive back's going to crouch down. And because he stopped too early, Bijan is able, is able to stop on a dime right there and get and get yards after at, at contact. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I think a lot of running backs would just follow 54 up this little seam here and just mm -hmm. take what you can get and just and then just get tackled if you're tackled. And especially because you're taught to just, you know, take the, the quickest path to more yards. And I think a lot of guys would even be criticized for trying to make this move. But because he's so gifted and able to do that, again, because you're combining the shiftiness with the power because he gets the stiff arm there, mm -hmm. you know. Again, it's other tacklers who are getting him on the ground, not the that one. So it, it's just he has everything. He really has everything. Um, the question is really, you know, what are you willing to invest in the guy? And, and at what point do we say that, you know, the running back shelf life just isn't long enough to justify it, right? Because this is a guy who's probably going to get you, honestly, this is not unrealistic to say, he's probably going to get you anywhere from five to 6,000 all-purpose yards in his first four years. It's more than likely through receiving through rushing, if he stays healthy, that's, I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation at all. So what investment is worth, aside from injury, essentially guaranteed five to 6,000 yards of production? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? I, well, I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I ain't one of those people who says you don't draft a running back in the first round or someone who doesn't say you don't pay running backs. I'm someone who says that in today's offense – you, you pay and you draft based on the weapon. And the reality is, is that Bijan might actually be the best overall player regardless of position. And that includes Will Anderson. That includes any of the quarterbacks just because mm -hmm. of how well he plays his position. Like the, I guess if you, there's a knock on him, I mean, it, it might be he ain't, he ain't the biggest back, but the problem but, – but, like, the issue with that is you can put on size in the NFL. You can take mm -hmm. on size in the NFL. So the size argument is only, is only valid for, like, a small period of time before they hit the, before they those offseason programs and gain or lose weight. Mm -hmm. Bijan, I can see him going as high as six to Detroit, um, just because how effective he is as a runner, as a as a blocker, as a receiver. He does everything right, and like, and if he's and if he is in fact the first round pick, you get that fifth year option. So you have those five cheap years before you, before mm -hmm. the, before the uh, eventual deterioration of the of the running back starts starts to uh, starts to peel off. But you know, with a talent like this, I think you know a lot of people want to bring up the Saquon. Uh, argument because he's drafted second overall and he was and he had a great rookie year and then was kind of got hurt a lot in this past year he was really really good um i think Bijan's better than, than saquon is out of college i think we everyone's trying to find that next great running back prospect and i think he's one of the best ones we've seen in a while i, th I think he's probably he's probably close to a todd Gurley type than anything else just because of how he does like pretty much everything well he didn't do it he didn't do anything the best but he does everything well like you said yeah and i think barkley was a better overall athlete i think he was more gifted size explosiveness and stuff but he wasn't i don't think he was as refined mm -hmm. as Bijan is at everything um and i i would suspect not top 10 for a couple of reasons and this is just predictive because there are a lot of teams that need quarterbacks in the top 10. There are also a few very special prospects in their own right at positions that are more consistently valued up there, whether it's Carter, whether it's Will Anderson, whether it's Christian Gonzalez, however you feel about Devin Witherspoon. I think there are enough players where we probably see him not going in the top 10, but I think teens is very realistic. Right. And I think the mocks where he's going in the 20s, are probably not going to happen. Not, not I mean, going to happen. Yeah. 
even last year, there were there were teams that were willing to trade up in the draft to get Brees Hall in the first round, and it didn't happen that way. But I I think he's there's really no question that Bijan's a better prospect than Brees Hall. You know, Brees Hall had the explosiveness, you know, the four three speed, but still, I just I think that the teens are a very realistic place for Bijan to go. Like I said, I think his ceiling might, might be Detroit at six. I think the lowest he could go would uh, – it, it might be – I'm, I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe Baltimore. Maybe Baltimore. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, you. I, I think you've got teams that can throw out a wild card. Like, I don't think they need a running back per se, but you never know what Belichick is going to do, right? He's at 14. Um then you've got. I want. I want to say the Chargers because I think the Chargers makes a lot of sense, but I think he's going to be gone before then. In my, my team, the Cowboys, is a popular team. I think people just want to attach like a big name to a big name franchise. He ain't going to make it to twenty six. It, it, it's mm-hmm. not going to happen. I think yeah. uh, it, you know one team that makes a lot of sense, but like he, people might not want to hear this, but I could totally see him going being drafted number nine overall to Chicago, and because last year Kylan Hill really took over with a, with the Devin with the excuse me, David Montgomery, but because Chicago wants to run the ball so much and they have such an effective runner at quarterback in Justin Fields, they've redefined that receiving core. They've started to really build up that offensive line. I could totally see them going with a three-headed monster in the backfield just because. Yeah, the only issue with them is that they need a lot of stuff. And it's, a, you know what I mean? That For them, it's one of those situations where, yeah, that like in theory, that's great, but you can also get effective running backs later too and they just need other stuff you just can't get later i don't i'm not you never know but i i I think they need edge rusher i think they need right i think they need edge rusher right tackle center and and a and a cornerback more than they would need Bijan. i think those four those are the ones they need more but i'm saying you could include interior in that as well interior defensive line too along with that so it's kind of everything but yeah so it's, it's just like i would be probably pretty critical of that um you know, even though, like, when you think of it in a singular position group, it can be fun and exciting. But um, but I think that's going to do it for our conversation on Bijan today, just because, you know, we know what he is. The The consensus on him is, is pretty clean, and it's really just about a conversation that has nothing to do with Bijan in terms of where he'll get drafted. And so we're going to talk about Zach Charbonnet next. And I will say that it's like it's tough to come off watching a player like Bijan and step into Charbonnet. It's just like it, it, it's you've got to really reset yourself and say, all right, I'm evaluating a new prospect that has nothing to do with the old one. Like mm-hmm. the comparison can't be there, but inevitably it is a little bit. But you can find me at the Max Dean. You can find Shane at Shane Carter TX, and you can find Defiant Takes Football at Defiant Takes on all social media outlets. We are live every Monday and Thursday on the YouTube channel. And all of our written content is going to be at defiantakesfootball.com. So come back and check out some more prospect breakdown videos with us before the draft. See you all very soon.